Today's lectionary scripture reading comes to us from Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 1 to 21, and they contain two stories, feeding the 5,000 and Jesus walking on water. And Vernon and I will read this together. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place. So they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled the twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat, and started across the lake to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The lake became rough because the strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately... The boat reached the land towards which they were going. Ever since 1976, I have never missed the televised Olympic opening ceremony. I look forward to it every single time. Once again, I I waited with great anticipation to watched the opening ceremonies from Tokyo, a city that I visited three times in the country that I lived for three years. In the background of my mind, however, I am saddened by all the money that is spent in hosting the Olympic Games, which could have been instead be used to build the city's infrastructures, affordable housing, beautiful libraries, modern hospitals, arts community, and to fight poverty all at a much lower cost. I am also saddened to learn that the newly built Olympic sporting facilities often go to waste not long after they are built. What, however, interests me is the idea that the whole world comes together in one location to play sports. I cannot think of any other events that bring people together. The modern Olympic Games in 1896 had only white men participating. Now it is the entire world 
And it was so good to see that both men and women served as co flag bearers with only a few exceptions. Listening to the CBC commentators, I learned that when Tokyo hosted the 1964 Olympic Games, they asked each country to bring seeds from their land. Then the Japanese Olympic Committee planted the seeds in special areas in Japan, and they harvested some of the woods from those trees, and they used them in this year's opening ceremony. I truly love that idea. I would like to see that become a new Olympic tradition. I would also love to see athletes bring the art of every nation and how I have art exhibitions. I would love to see chefs come as well and prepare food for the public to taste foods from around the world. I would love to see musicians come and perform concerts as well. We can all rejoice in the rich gifts of humanity in all its expressions, complexity, and make our diversity be the source of our excellence. In today's reading, we learn that Jesus, in his healing ministry, he became quite popular and gained a huge following. In an age where medical care was not so advanced as it is today, healing was a huge blessing and a miracle. When Jesus and his disciples climbed up a mountain, they noticed a crowd coming towards them. The concern was how to feed them. Jesus tested Philip. Where are we going to buy the food to feed them? Even before the crowd approached, Jesus was concerned about feeding them. It seems very akin to having impromptu guests come to our home, and we want to make sure that we would have something to offer our guests to make them feel welcome, whether it is a drink or snack or a meal. Jesus was a caring host. Philip, on the other hand, was not worried about where to buy the food, but about how much it would cost, that it would cost six months of wages. It would have been money they would not have. They thought they were in trouble. Then the disciples noticed a boy with five barley loaves and two fish. Obviously, that is much more than what the boy himself could eat. He came prepared, just like any one of us who is going on an outing would make sure that there would be enough food, water, sunscreen, and even mosquito repellent. In other words, people did not come empty-handed they already had enough to eat. What Jesus did next was that he had them all sit down. He took the loaves and fish, gave thanks, and distributed them to the people. When I was young, I thought as Jesus was distributing the fish and bread, I thought they kept growing continuously until all 5,000 were fed. In reality, Jesus performed a sacrament of communion. He took the bread, gave thanks, and distributed to the people. This is what he did when Jesus celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples. Rather than having the people eat by themselves or with their own immediate family, Jesus had people eat with strangers. He turned a solitary activity into a communal activity. Instead of eating only the food that they brought, he turned it into a potluck meal party. People got to know their neighbors in the spirit of joy and in one community. All were well fed and there was a sense of abundance. A few years ago, when my uncle went to visit Korea on a business trip, he stayed a little longer to see his relatives. He also realized that he had a lot of free time on his hands. I asked him if he was able to try really good Korean food. He said, Sally, no. He felt uncomfortable about going to a really nice restaurant 
all by himself. So he often went to cafeterias and takeout restaurants in malls, eating delicious food. However, good it is, in the end, was not worth it if he was eating by himself. We need one another. Jesus also highlighted the importance of giving thanks, that we do not take our food for granted, that there are people who are hungry for food and thirsty for justice in our world. It is important to give thanks for the vitality of life, the web of life, and the circle of life that continuously feed us. It is also important to be mindful of all the work that is being done to bring the food to our table, including the migrant workers who do the back-breaking work in hot fields, to truck drivers who deliver the food, to the supermarket workers who sell the food to us, and the chefs in the kitchens who put them all together in a tasty combination of ingredients and spices for us to eat and be nourished. We also thank God who created life here on earth and throughout the universe so that we can take delight in the joy of eating both simple and fine foods. Food certainly tastes better when we eat with gratitude. We can savor it more with a grateful heart. We will certainly want to share that experience with others rather than just by ourselves. I used to think the sacra sacrament of communion only happens during the formally ritualized way in the church. The spirit of communion is that we can take it to the world, taking the food we have, giving thanks, and eating it with others in togetherness. So what happens inside the church can happen in our community. At the start of the Tokyo Olympic opening ceremonies, we saw individual athletes training by themselves in isolation, reflecting the reality of the COVID-19 pandemic. Then the isolated athletes came together on the stage. Through a Herculean effort, the athletes and officials have come from 206 countries for this Olympic games. There is still a huge risk despite all the precautions and protocols, and I hope that they can manage to, manage to contain any outbreaks. The reality is that sports are a lot more fun when we do it with other people. Food tastes better when we eat with others. Singing is much more joyful when we sing together. Worship is much more meaningful when we do it with fellow pilgrims. Our resources are much better spent when we pool them together for causes that are bigger than each of us individually, but instead for the service of our community and humanity. The Olympic Games give some hope for humanity coming together to play sports rather than fighting with one another, but there are even more meaningful ways. Jesus did two memorable things in this short scripture passage, feeding 5,000 and walking on water. Jesus walking on water is a nice party trick, but working to make people sit together and share a meal is much more meaningful. And it is a sacrament where we see the visible sign of God's invisible grace. Through that, we get a glimpse of what heaven earth might look like. We can begin simply at a common table, eating together in gratitude, in the spirit of the one who shared his bread and his love with us. We pray and work towards a day when all the people will have enough to eat, drink, and be merry. 
May God inspire us to live in that spirit of compassion and justice while creating hope for new life. Thanks be to God.